In this presentation, we will make a trial balance from a balance sheet and income statement within Excel. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. In the last presentation, we exported the trial balance from QuickBooks, but there are many situations where we might not have the trial balance. We would just need to create the trial balance. That is possible if all we have is the balance sheet and the income statement to do so. It may well be worthwhile to make a trial balance from it. To do that, here's Excel. I'm just going to format this quickly to get us to the same point in time as we were basically if we were to export the trial balance. So first thing I'll do is just format this worksheet. And typically every time I open a new worksheet, I typically highlight the entire thing, control A or select this little triangle and then right click on it and format the cells within it. And I usually make it currency and we're going to make it, I'm going to make the negatives have color and the brackets. I'm going to remove the dollar sign. I don't need the dollar sign everywhere. And we could even remove the pennies if we so choose. I'm going to keep them for now as we enter the data and maybe get rid of them later. So I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to make the, the size of it, the zoom, a bit larger down below, down here. I'm going to just hit the plus arrow. Let's take it up to like, I don't know, 150. Let's bring it to 150. Now what we're going to do is, is look at QuickBooks. Now we may not have the QuickBooks file. We might just have these two reports, the balance sheet and the income statement. But even if this was just a PDF file and we had it on our desk, you know, here's the balance sheet and the income statement. We don't, for whatever reason, have the trial balance. So how can we make a trial balance, a debit and credit type thing, something that we can work with from these financial statements? Well, I'm going to minimize this for now. And all we're going to do is just go through this information and enter it into our worksheet. So I'm going to put this on the left and try to see it as well as we can, these two things at the same time. We'll put this on the right so that we can see these two things. There they are side by side. So what we want to do is go through here and all we have to do is enter these and say, well, we need to know if it's a debit or credit balance. And if we do, we could just enter these and it should have has to reconcile because it's it's this thing was built from a trial balance. So we're just re we're just reversing the process basically to put this back into trial balance format, which is very really useful for most uh, type of accounting stuff. So all we do is I'm going to make this one a little bit larger, column B. And I'm just going to put the description. We're just going to put the bare minimum right now to get this information up and running. So the first one is the checking account. So I'll just type in checking account. And I want to do this exactly as, it, as the client has it. If I see errors, I'm not going to fix the errors as we transpose the data because that doesn't, that doesn't tell anyone what we did. What we, what we have to do is have an exact replica of the client's data that we will then fix and show how we fixed it within our worksheet. So this is going to be a debit. I'm going to put all debits in here as positive numbers and credits as negative numbers. And then I'm going to add them up and the debits minus the credits will equal zero. So this is 116425.56. Then notice we have a subcategory. We're going to remove all subcategories because we don't need them. We want, we want to eliminate all the added information. Accounts receivable. If I misspell anything, I apologize. This is just an example. 10,974, also a debit, therefore positive. And then we're going to go to other assets and I'm going to, I'm going to skip the subcategories. Don't need them. We're just entering them straight in here. Inventory assets. We're going to say 1312. We're going to say prepaid insurance. And that's going to be 11,000. We're going to say undeposited funds is 4,500. Then again, we're going to eliminate, we're not going to include the subcategory. If I'm worried, if we miscalculated anything, then we could highlight these and just say, hmm, Excel says that's at 27,786. Uh, and uh, these start with inventory. So inventory on down is 16,812. There's the 16,812. If I highlight all of it, 144,211, 144,211. So we should be able to do this for a, a pretty, any size trial balance or balance sheet and income statement. We, we can put it into a trial balance format without too much effort. I mean, it does take some data input, but it's doable, very doable. 
Okay, so then we have subtotal, subtotal. We don't need that. We don't need the header. Going back down to furniture and equipment. Also a debit. So I'm going to add 98,000. Now, if you, had, if you had accumulated depreciation related to it, often a place where people mess up, it's going to be a credit here because it's a contra asset. We'll deal with those in the entries. We don't need the total assets, but I could double check right now by just highlighting and saying, yep, yeah, 242, 211, 242, 211. I'm good so far. Continuing on to the liabilities. These are all credits. They're not their positive number here, but we know they're credits from a debit and credit standpoint. So we're going to go accounts payable, and I'm going to represent credits with a negative 1200. Zero, zero. And then the debits minus the credits will equal zero. I'm going to skip the subcategory. We're going to go to the visa, negative 1000. Now we're on the other current liabilities, payroll liabilities, negative 1653.64. Sales tax payable is going to be negative 125. I'm going to skip the subcategories, but if I want to know if I'm doing this right, highlight those. 3978. 3978 looks good. Liability is good so far. Down to the long term liabilities. And so we're just going to put that's a loan payable at 34627 skipped in the subcategory and notice I didn't put a negative and if I were to check it it wouldn't be in balance it doesn't tie out to our total liabilities therefore I double click negative before that highlighting it liabilities look good we will keep pushing forward then we're in the equity section we're in owners draws owners draws and that's going to be 100 notice it's a contra equity it's a debit balance, draws or debits, but you can see it's a contra equity if, if that's confusing, if that doesn't come to us easily. Owner's equity. These are credits, so negative 150396, and then net income. Now, I'm just putting net income here now just to see if we're in balance, and then I'll fix net income. Net income doesn't belong here, in other words. But if I look at this 53309.92, then if I highlight all of this, if the debits and credits are in balance, then it should add up to zero. Debits minus credits equal zero because the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity. How does the income statement fit into this picture? Well, QuickBooks tells us by, by breaking out the net income portion here. We're going to recalculate net income. So I'm not going to put net income here. No, we're going to go to the income statement, which will be net income. 53309, if I go back here, Profit and loss. Profit and loss now will be the 53309. So we have to add all these accounts for the profit and loss. Then we'll be in balance. So now we're on the income. So income is just going to be merchandise sales. Credit. Remember income is our credit. Negative 79674.4. Rent. Music. Equipment. We're going to say credit 4500 service we're going to say credit 98080 and again subcategory if i add these three up 182 254 182 254 looks good so far cost of goods sold cost of goods sold we're going to say is 39500 looks good that's a debit because it's an expense and now we got to just crank out all these expenses here so we'll just now you may want to use this method, and this might be good for some of the prior areas as well, but there's all these expenses. Maybe I just type them out first and then put in all the numbers afterwards. So that might be a little bit faster here. Let's give it a shot. So I'm just going to type everything out. Bank service charges. Enter. Charitable contributions. Enter. Computer and internet expense. Expenses, enter, interest, expense, enter, meals, and entertainment, enter, miscellaneous, expense, enter, payroll, expenses, penalties, political contribution, 
rent. If I misspell these, I apologize. But I'm just showing it. You could put this in here pretty quick. Expense and utilities. We could try to check those and say, okay, did I mess up the spelling really bad? We can have someone, I can highlight these. I don't want to check all of it, so I'm just going to check these numbers right now. Probably should check all of it. But I'll go to the review tab and, well, let's, let's make this full screen so I can see my spell check. Spell check. We'll keep that for now. And again, that I probably misspelled some of it, so I'll, you know, I can go back and take a look at it. But that's one way we can at least give a quick spell check. So now let's go back and see if we skipped any accounts by entering the numbers and just double checking there. So now we'll just enter the numbers: three fifty eight thousand. Enter one eight zero zero. Enter two nine eight zero. Enter eleven thousand. Enter eight hundred. Enter five hundred. Enter nine two four nine nine point four nine or eight. Enter three. Thousand enter five seventy enter negative four zero five zero zero. That's a credit. That's something's funny happening there. And then five eight zero zero and one zero one four four. Notice something's wrong here. Something doesn't line up. So enter this in too fast in some way. Let's go back and see which one is off. So we're gonna go up top. Now typically if I start, you know, try to find one that's in balance first, like I'll just pick one. Miscellaneous, that looks good. If I go under underneath it, this one first of all should be 5,000. So I'm going to add another 0, 5,000. And that's for payroll. And then actually the 5,000 should be office supplies. So it looks like I'm missing office supplies. So that's, that's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I need to pull these down. I need another space right here for office supplies. So there's a couple ways you could do it. I can insert a cell. Or I can highlight what is there and pull it down. Now, it might be best to insert a cell because if you had a lot of stuff here, this would be the fastest way. If this is all you got, you can highlight and pull it down. But if I, if I right click here and say insert and then shift down, all right, there we go. So it doesn't move this down, it moves this down. And then we have the office supplies. So there we have that. Everything else looks like it's lining up. If I was to add up just the expenses, it started here, bank service charges down to here, adds up to, to uh, 101443.48, 101443.48. So again, you could do that pretty quickly. You want to go back and just double check everything's okay, but just to show you that it's fairly easy to take, take this and put the information in, even if there's a lot of expense accounts. And then we've got the other income. Again, I'm not going to do any subcategories. We're just going to type in interest income and other income. And there we have it. 1999. And interest income is actually negative. It's going to be a credit. Negative 1999. And if I if I messed that up, I'd be able to figure it out because I'd be off by let's let's actually do that. If I mess this up and put it 1999, which I have seen oftentimes and then other income 10,000. Now I want to see if we're in balance because the whole thing should add up to zero. If I add up the whole thing, debits minus the credits should add up to zero. It doesn't. It's off by 23,998. So let's sum this up using the sum function. So we'll say equals the sum of all of this. And we'll say that is that and enter. So it's off by that. And, and so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let's take that and divide it by two and see if I recognize the number. Cause it could be that I went the wrong way with something. I put it in as a debit and it should have been a credit or vice versa equals this divided by two. And there's the 11999, which I recognize right there. So that's one way we can do it. The other way we do it is we, is we check every section so we're going to say okay uh the the income over here if i add up income starts at merchandise that adds up to 182 254 that looks good i already so i'll make it a different color cost of goods sold that looks good and then we'll take a look at the bank service charges all the way down the expenses down to utilities right down to utilities 101443, 101434348. That looks good. And then I would look at this and say, hmm, that looks good too. 
because the the t the total's the same, but when I add up all of it, it should add up to net income twenty nine three one one, and it doesn't. It right this adds up to fifty three three oh nine. So what's the difference if I look at each category? It's this right. It's that went the wrong way. So it's half of that. So I'm going to double click on that and put a negative, and then a negative. So it's just basically a puzzle to kind of fit, figure this out. And it's really not that difficult to put this information from a balance sheet and profit and loss into the trial balance to give us our starting point, same starting point we would have by just exporting from QuickBooks for the most part. And then we could take the information from here and move forward. Just remember, as you do this, the main goal is to, is to make it exactly the same as these accounts. Just take out the subcategories transpose it from a plus and minus to a debit and credit don't make any changes as you're transposing if you notice things that are wrong <laughs> make a note of them at, and those are going to be adjusting entries you'll make later so you're not you know it doesn't save any time to try to fix something as we're transposing the numbers be what we're going to do if we notice something during that process write it down and then we'll go back to it later and we'll make an adjusting entry for it so that we can not only make the number right, but show how to make the number right for ourselves and others. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.